Hello and welcome to The Arise interview. 60 minutes of big questions about the big stories from the news and beyond with fresh insight and critical analysis. I'm Charles Enyegulu. Coming up in the next hour, as Nigeria and dozens of other African countries step up efforts to enforce a ban on large gatherings in an attempt to contain the spread of the coronavirus, there is evidence of a pushback from religious leaders, with several ignoring the call for social distancing on a continent where millions of people attend churches and mosques regularly. So what should be done in such circumstances? We'll speak with two imams about how the Muslim community in Nigeria is coping with the pandemic. And later, you might have heard about a conspiracy theory on the coronavirus that's been doing the rounds in Nigeria and beyond, suggesting that the virus has been spreading because it's being transmitted via new 5G masts or because the signal is suppressing people's immune systems. So, are these theories complete rubbish or are there credible studies that support such ideas? We'll speak to an expert in a moment. Now, as every continent remains deep in the grip of the coronavirus pandemic, in parts of the world, religious gatherings are continuing to take place in defiance of government restrictions imposed on such congregational gatherings. Examples of such behavior abound in Israel, where Orthodox Jews continue to hold crowded religious events despite a government ban. Such meetings are also taking place in Iraq and Pakistan, where Muslim Friday prayers are continuing to take place, and in the United States, where Christians have continued to gather despite stay-at-home orders. Here in Nigeria, despite directives from the government, the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and the Council of Imams, as well as the Christian Association of Nigeria CAN and the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria, religious gatherings are reported to be continuing to take place. You see, the number of worshippers that were in the mosque today are not up to the one-third of the normal congregation due to our sensitization, talking to the people to understand the situation. Today is just a fate that uh, uh, some of us uh, that gathered here and, uh, came into the mocks to pray and then we have uh, just concluded our uh, Jumu'at prayer in this very masjid which is national mocks. But that's why the fact there is this very angled description, so distance description, proximity and what have you, we really and I, uh, I really did not in any way uh, have the fear of anything that can happen to me today. And well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Imam Fuad Adeyemi, National Chief Imam at the Al Habibiya Mosque here in Abuja. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you so much. What's the current situation with mosques across Nigeria? Have they closed to worshippers amid concerns about the coronavirus outbreak? Well, alhamdulillah, uh, we thank God, at least where we are. And uh, we find ourselves in a situation that is strange to us. Strange because we see this one to us as Muslim as a test from Almighty Allah. Now that this has come, the government has imposed a ban on uh, gatherings. I always tell people, even if the government has not imposed any ban on gathering, as Muslim, from uh, the concept of Sharia in Islam, after mm -hmm. God, what's next is life. So anything that we, prof that we, uh, we protect life, it is things that are actually Islamic. Now, the government has imposed a ban on gathering. In most places in Nigeria, this ban is being enforced. The Muslims are avoiding it. But there is a challenge. And that challenge is the problem of information. We think we are doing enough, especially when it comes to religious things in Nigeria. We have uh, a, a wrong impression about the strength of the media. I've always been telling people, 
We always assume because it has been shown, it is on social media, it is on normal media, everybody has heard about it. No, 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 we are deceiving ourselves. That's a good point. We are deceiving ourselves. So, we are, we are, there's this wrong assumption, it's so far, like now, let's say the government is having, uh, is setting up a kind of uh, advice, what should do, what should do. How many people have light at that time? How many people have television? How many people have radio? How many people have access to phone where they can have it on social media? We always assume because you are all in Abuja, you are all in Lagos, you think that is the Alpha Omega of the Nigerian populace. No. So now what I'm saying is that most people who are aware of this thing, they're actually obeying the other. Well, the, the, the video clip we just saw okay. was obviously a clip in a modern Nigerian That's city. a national mosque. Right. So yeah. the guy who was talking was basically saying that in effect, he doesn't really, I mean, the, the, the second person yeah. who spoke, that he doesn't really see any problem as far as this is concerned. So he's somebody who is enlightened, but clearly doesn't believe in social distancing. No, 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 no. that would be a mistake. That would be a mistake. In the rule of Islam, the, our Prophet wasalam, said, if there is an epidemic, if somebody has uh, a particular sickness, that, that person should be allowed to stay in a room without coming out. And that's why I did that. It says, La Dorar wa la dirar, that you do not inflict pain or injury on, on other, and you don't allow pain or injury to be inflicted on you. Right. So in other words, the, the, the Quran supports the idea of a lockdown in the event of a health challenge. Let me tell you something you don't know. The word quarantine is actually an Islamic word from uh, uh, Ibn Sina, called Avicina, who was the father of modern uh, uh, medical sciences. Yes, I know a lot of medical science mm. came from the Arab world. From no the question. Arab Muslims. Yes. I think you should underline that English well. From the Arab Muslims. So, quarantine is actually an Arabic word which means arba'in, which means somebody who is uh, afflicted with some leprosy or some other sickness should be staying in isolated. a place isolated for 40 days. That's the meaning of quarantine. Mm. So, the meaning is this quarantine to us as Muslims is actually our idea. So it was when the Italian came across the book of Avicenna that is how they translated it to Yeah, but, but do Muslims understand how fundamental it is to the beliefs that they have? Naturally, they do. The Muslims so why aren't some of them obeying? I'm coming. Right. That is where I'm going. You see, the, the country where, where we live, you see, we are living an imaginary life. And let me explain what I mean by imaginary life. When Chinese when they discover that they are not doing well in Olympics, they introduce their strength sport where they have strength, so where they have strength in the sport, mm. like table tennis, like uh, taekwondo, like gymnastics, sort of right. and they began to have medals. Now, the Nigerians, there's one thing which we have that nobody has it. We have almost equal number of Muslim and Christian. No country can be proud of that beside Nigeria. Now, what do we need to do? We now need to, 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 lever to, lever to have a kind of leverage on religious strength, which we have. Nigeria does not, if you see the governance in Nigeria, is devoid of anything religious. Let me explain what I mean by that. It's a secular. It's a, it's, yes, it's a secular. Secular country, yes. We can't deceive ourselves. That's right between secularity and imposition of a particular religion on a party on the entire nation. That's not what I'm saying. We should, we were supposed to have a kind of department or a ministry that was supposed to be in charge of religion. Right, yeah. Okay. Please, I'm but coming. Let me land. No, I'm I, coming. I, I, okay, go And on. When, somebody, when that one is, 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 is granted, then you will be able to monitor everything that religious people are doing. You will know who will be here, who will be there. Whenever you want anything to be changed or you want to do something, it's just a matter of this is the way I want it and everybody hears. Yeah, but I, I would argue that um, a lot of people would dispute that for the simple reason that you, you could make the same argument about every other aspect of society, that it needs its own ministry in order to be monitored. I mean, you've got monitoring departments across the country and the religious organizations are part of society and therefore they fall under the ambit of the general monitoring that takes place. But just to return to the issue, Katsina State, for example, has announced that it's lifting the ban on mosques and churches on Friday and Sunday to accommodate prayers. I mean, what's your reaction to that, given the fact that these are not rural villages? I mean, this is a government making a decision in the face of a pandemic that is hitting Nigeria. Let me add more. 
on those states. Yesterday or today, they with Khan and the, the, all the churches collaboration in Ondo State, they've also decided that during this, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Easter period, mm. that they will also come to church, but they will maintain regular, normal, uh, uh, what do you call it? Social distancing. Social distancing, washing of hands, and other things which are also needed. Yeah, but how many people are going to attend? Because there, there's a limit on the number of people yes, who can congregate. Yes, they said that the small churches right. should not be more than 20, or church that is more than that can be up to 50. So that is what... Yeah, but, but what's your reaction to all that? Naturally, the reaction is you cannot be more, uh, 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 more religious than the one who has brought the religion. You might think that this thing is important to the owner of religion himself. I believe Jesus Christ was to be alive. Now, he would not agree with what they are doing. If Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were to be alive, he would not agree with what they are doing. Because you, can, you, can you be more Muslim than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who brought Islam? Let me tell you something. If it is raining in Islam, you are stopped from going to a congregational mosque because of one or two things. Either you will be wet mm. or you can fall down. They Which, said, of course, could make you susceptible, be susceptible to being sick. To be, so because of that, in Islam, you don't go to congregational prayer. When it's, and also, when somebody eats garlic or ordinary onion, those people are stopped from going to congregational prayer because they might hurt uh, or they might have caused discomfort to right. other people. Because of the smell. Because of the smell. Right. I've given you this to let you know as little as smell you are prevented from going to congregational prayer. Talk less of things that involve life. People perhaps, probably, they don't know the, what life is in Islam. And that is why I will still go back to what I'm saying. We need the real education of all the religious leaders. There are many people that you cannot say they are not educated, but they are educated in ignorance. Okay, listen, Imad, Imam Fuad Adami, I mean, please stay with us because I want to talk to you some more. This is absolutely fascinating, the discussion I'm having with you. Absolutely brilliant revelation. So let's talk some more. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about how the Muslim community in Nigeria is coping with coronavirus restrictions in the face of pushback from religious leaders. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Enyugulu. Now, as you may know, in Nigeria, religious and social gatherings have been restricted in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. But in a country where millions of people are illiterate or subliterate, and where millions more have little or no access to the internet, television, or even radio, that information often doesn't get through. And religious and traditional leaders are an important conduit for the transmission of directives about the pandemic. But surprisingly, and perhaps shockingly, congregational gatherings are continuing to take place. And there is video evidence on social media of the police forcibly shutting down some of these gatherings. Come to torment the house of God. Nobody will do it. But it was clear, and we all understand very clearly, what the Bible record and what Paul told the church of God that worshipped in Rome. In Romans 13, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, he was very explicit that all authorities that be are ordained of the Lord, and these authorities bear rules that we all be properly governed. And even in Daniel 4, 17 and 25, it was clear when Daniel spoke to the king and made this very clear that Jehovah reigneth in the kingdom of men and give this kingdom to people at periodic moments to guide the affairs of men. We don't like coming to do this. But when we see people and we understand the calamity we are all in, it's only up for us to understand that this is an extreme gathering. And we must tell ourselves the truth. In Galatians 2, verse 11, Paul says, when Peter had come to Antioch, I restored I it to his face because Peter was wrong. When something is wrong, let's be out to say, hey, pastor, something is wrong and not adding up here. When we come here now, you will go home and say, oh, some men had come in here to contravene and desecrate the house of the Lord. We ought not to have been here in the first place. You cannot hold this. It's wrong. We have gone on air. We've gone round. We have preached. We have appealed. We have begged. Can't have begged. Everyone had come forward to beg you. We are appealing to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever you hold dearly, please congregate him. Should not be for now. Let's gather onto ourselves 
and our family and pray unto God and cry unto him and seek his intervention that thou that does abide in Gilead we touch our land and touch humanity and this will go up us and we can gather in our millions and look up to God in moments of bliss and say God you have done it again. Now that's a team there from uh, the Abuja Federal Capital Territory in Nigeria trying to stop people from congregating in a church in defiance of government orders and restrictions. With me in the studio, Imam Fuad Ademi, National Chief Imam of the Al Habibiya Mosque in Abuja. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Thank you so much. And sir. what he is saying to a Christian congregation is pretty much the same point you're well, making Muslim, to yeah. a Muslim congregation, yeah. isn't it? He has met another Muslim congregation before that time. Mm. I think a day before that time, which I also witnessed. So it's almost the same thing. But I think. And you support what he's saying. What he said, hundred percent in support of him because in Islam, I've said it initially, everything or anything that can sustain and preserve life mm. is worship to us. So considering the current pandemic mm. and the associated health risks, does it appear to you as if Katsina State and the other states, Ogun State, I think Kogi, Undo, Undo. And, a, and a Undo State and, mm. and a number of others, does it appear to you as if those states are not taking careful considerations and, and are ignoring the recommended precautions? Ha, I don't want to uh, say that, but what they are doing is completely wrong. I've said it. You see, you God. There are three categories of people who claim to know God. There are some that are religious, there are some that are spiritual, and there are some that are godly. You see, these people who are religious, they actually don't think about God. They think about themselves. Mm. They think about their personality, what they will get, the honor they have, the respect people give them, and the, the people, these places they will have. I categorize those people as very religious people, but abandoning God. Because if you are actually worshiping God, God says, don't do this because of your life. You say you must do it mm. for God's sake. There is, an, there is one opportunity in Islam. You know, we used to pray five times in a day. There are, our Baha'i prayers is had like four, four raka, four, two, three. When you are traveling, whether you are tired or not, Islam allows you, the one of two, or four, it allows you to reduce it to two, and two, four, four, to match the four, four raka together and turn it to four instead of eight, and you do it together. Some people now say, no, I'm not tired. I'm not, I'm strong. The prophet, somebody went, our prophet one day, they said, we are, we are not tired, we can still do this thing. Mm. Then I said, why should I need to reduce the prayer? The prophet said, the owner of prayer is the one who dash you. When God himself dash you, why do you say you? Is it the one yeah. devil give so you? So you're making noise louder than the person who actually yeah, the gave you the privilege. So the religion we are doing, if sincerely is for God, we should be able to understand what God wants. Right. It's not just about ourselves. It is about this God. Yes, understood. But us. beyond the Friday prayers, mm. which are usually congregational and therefore obviously pose a risk, mm. what about lessons that are run in mosques, for example, to teach children and adults the Arabic language, the Quran, that sort of mm. thing? Have those also been cancelled? All of them have been cancelled. All can Incidentally, with technology, they run right. a lot of it online now, and there are so many... Uh, ways of doing that. L let me tell you also one thing. You know, people are hungry now. Uh, recently in our mosque, I think last Friday, we had some six bags of rice that we want to give people who are living around the mosque. Mm. As we're about giving that, in less than 10 minutes, people that were not more than 20, 30, wallahi, we have about 500 people. About 500 people who are shocked. Somebody like me who lives something, we have to run away. Because we didn't know what to do. I was so afraid because I know security people would yes, be coming. Yes, of course, yes. Say, say I am, do, I am uh, 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 a touch bearer mm. of this thing. Now, for anybody to now do this, how will I defend it? So, so, I'm trying to let you know that. Now, what we decided to be doing on this thing is that if we have anything again, we won't tell anybody. We'll put it at the back, at the, inside our cars, like five, ten of us will be going from one place right, okay. to another. But, but at least the same thing they are doing with the training of the children. Right.
But in the absence of such congregational prayers mm. at mosques on mm. Fridays, how are such prayers now being conducted? conducted. Are people praying at home yeah. using the internet no, 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 to no, no, stream no. live? I mean, a lot of Christians are doing, doing that. that. Okay, let me tell you one thing about our religion. Mm. There are three places where when you pray, the reward is above any other place. That is the mosque in Mecca, the one in Medina, and the one in Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem mosque is our own, the Muslims. Mm. So, if you don't pray in any of those three places, any other place you pray, including your room, including the National Mosque, is the same reward. The moment you are more than one, you are two, you are praying congregational prayer. It's even more rewarding when you pray with your family at home. Mm. You allow your children to be part of it. There's an adage we used to have in Nigeria before. They said Muslims used to teach their children right from infancy how they do their religion. They say, so that is just the translation. So the meaning, we have been missing that for long. Now, this thing at home is now giving us the opportunity right. to stay with our family. And also, in Islam, the Prophet said, every land has been made mosque for him except burial ground and washrooms. So anywhere you say your prayer, it is a mosque for us as Muslims. Mm. And the official message about coronavirus from the central and recognized Muslim authority in Nigeria. What is that message? I mean, from the Sultan of Sokoto, for example, and the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, what are they saying about COVID-19? What's the guidance from well, them? You should follow whatever government asks you to do because government acts in conjunction with the professionals. So the first thing, they give us a Quranic verse that says, follow Allah, follow the messenger, and those in position of authority. They've, asked, they've been telling us we should follow the injunction that whatever rule government brings, they say it is to save our life. And secondly, they are using the verses of the Quran to guide us. There is a verse of the Quran that do not use your own hands to kill yourself, to destroy yourself. Mm. It's even popular. What so in, in the light of what you're saying, mm -hmm. would you consider a mosque that opens it, its doors to congregational prayers on Friday, for instance, to be acting irresponsibly? I won't use that as your word, but acting against Islam, acting against God, acting against government, acting against Almighty Allah, was who they think they are worshipping. What if they, are, they, they argue that they should open their doors because they believe that God takes care of his own? In Islam, how God takes care of his own is even our own prophets. There was a year he wanted to perform Hajj. He goes to the boundary of Mecca from Medina. The people stopped him that you cannot come. If they wanted to fight, they could have fought that time and won and enter Mecca by force. He said, no, if this is what they do, let us maintain peace, let us maintain harmony, let us maintain uh, uh, things that will make our relationship not to be destroyed. They went back. So to us as Muslim, you first and foremost do the things that are needed, then you hand it over to God. You do the things. There's a verse of the Quran. Quran says, "Why is that? Allah kaiba di fa ine kori buji buda wata da ida da ani fali yesterday buli wali you mino bila la wiyar shudu." Allah says, "Where you are?" That's the Quran chapter two. Allah says, "Where you are asking of him, that be rest assured that I will answer your prayers." But for me to answer your prayers, there are conditions. Fali yesterday buli, you answer my call. You believe in me, you answer my call. Then you'll be successful. So there are conditions to the way we do things. Yet God owns life. You should protect it first. The Prophet said, when there's epidemic, mm. if you stay, you should stay at home. Don't come out. That when you stay at home, if God takes your life, God takes your life as a matthaya. If you're still alive, you are still alive as a matthaya. So it is win-win for Muslims when we take precaution first. Right. But it is your sense that in spite of all these things, your interpretation of the holy word, and in spite of all the government restrictions, it is your sense that some Muslim congregations are continuing to meet in defiance of those guidelines. I don't understand your question. Is it your sense that in spite of this interpretation you've given, okay. and in spite of the restrictions imposed by the government, no. that some Muslim congregations are continuing to meet okay. in defiance of, of those of guidelines? Yes, that's what I've told you. It is 
they, 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 they are disobeying God, disobeying the authority which Quran has guided us to follow. Right. And also, they, let me give you an example. That no, was, no, we haven't got that much time. Okay. So just say your last word and then we've got to go. As a Muslim, life confessed. Anything that you will need, you will do to sustain and preserve life. It is not much for you to do it. Your life confessed. Okay. I want to say thank you very much indeed to you. And that is uh, Imam Fuad Adeyemi, who's the national chief imam at the Al Habibiya Mosque in Abuja. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Sir. Very interesting conversation. Very good, You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about the pushback from religious leaders in the face of COVID-19 restrictions. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. As Nigeria and dozens of other African countries step up efforts to enforce a ban on large gatherings in an attempt to contain the spread of the coronavirus. There is evidence of a pushback from religious leaders, with several ignoring the call for social distancing on a continent where millions of people attend churches and mosques regularly. So what should be done in such circumstances? Well, let's speak now to another very knowledgeable imam about how the Muslim community in Nigeria is coping with the restrictions around the pandemic. Joining me in the studio, Dr. Umar Yanda Aliyu, Deputy Chief Imam, Uthman bin Alfan Mosque in Abuja. He's also a lecturer at the College of Education here in Abuja. Thank you very much indeed for coming Thank in. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you. Would you say that with the increasing rate of transmission and the rising number of deaths in Nigeria from COVID-19, Muslims have a public as well as an Islamic duty to protect one another from harm? Thank you very much for this uh, very beautiful question. As a Muslim and uh, being part and parcel of the Muslim community in Nigeria, Muslim or Islam as a religion is a religion that has so much, attaches so much importance to life. Because there are certain five major objectives of Islam, which protecting life is number one. Because whatever you are going to do in terms of worshipping Allah, if somebody is not living, there is no way you will worship Allah. Mm. And that is why whatever will affect human life, Islam stands out rightly to protect it. Protecting a single life, protecting a single life is as if you are protecting the entire woman. Mm. Taking a single life is as if you are taking the entire life of the woman. Islam, in its own wisdom, whatever comes in of harm, of hardship to human beings, Islam stands to defend the human beings. Coronavirus pandemic is a global phenomenon as declared by the World Health Organization, which in Nigeria is not exceptional. Initially, we were saying it is an imported uh, virus. Now, the community transmission of the pandemic have started showing up in Nigeria from even the briefing of presidential task force which they have been saying. They started seeing the manifestation of community transmission. Now, in Islam, from the onset, if it were to be that Islam is done controlling, from where the virus emanated, it would have been controlled. Mm. How? You don't allow anybody that is within that Wuhan to go out, and nobody goes in. Having neglected that, people goes out, and then even we here, people comes in from those countries that were already affected, now brings us now, included us among the victims. From the starting of the virus in Nigeria, the bodies, Islamic organizations, starting from the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, there had been bulletins, there had been directives, that, okay, this is what is coming up. As a Muslim community, take this caution, take this caution, and follow the protocols established by the health workers and also obey the authorities. So why are there some 
congregations that are defying that? Is it evident to them that the most effective way to deal with this outbreak is to avoid social contact as much as possible? Yes, you can see the established health protocol in order to at least be secured mm. from this pandemic is for us to have social distancing. And uh, we Muslims, when we come to pray, we join our legs together. There is no way you keep a distance. From there, what do we do? Stop any congregational gatherings. That, as I was, as I was saying, the Supreme Council gave a directive. Even here in Abuja, mm. even here in Abuja, the Committee of FCT Imams Initiative, we are carried along by the FCT administration in taking that collective decision. The leadership of the uh, CFII were invited, mm. and that of also Khan were invited, and they sat all together with the leadership of the FCT administration. Okay, this is what is coming, and this is what the government intends to do, which means all the religious bodies were carried along. I should speak for the Muslims mm. immediately when the initiative had this interactive session with the leadership of the FCT administration, they immediately issued. A directive. They were even to have a conference. They said three weeks to that, they said the conference had been suspended. Right, okay. J just explain to us how it works in Nigeria in terms of religious obligation. Um, because in several Muslim countries, it is seen as a religious obligation for men to attend Friday prayers, but women, children, the sick, the disabled, are not obliged to attend. Is yes. that the same in Nigeria? Yes, but even that position hmm. of not making it obligation upon women and the, those the sick ones is optional. It's optional. It's not compulsory upon them, as it is made obligatory upon the main adult. Right. Yes. What about the economic consequences of the closure of mosques? Your colleague was hinting at this a little bit earlier when I was talking to him, because quite a lot of commercial activity takes place around many mosques on Fridays. How is that affecting people, poor people, small businesses, that sort of thing, that need that? Yes, it is very, very natural. And let me quote uh, the chairman, uh, this presidential uh, task force, in person of SGF, Boss Mustafa, who says this pandemic it's not only attacking our health, mm. but also attacking our wealth. Your our wealth. Oh, wealth. Wealth. Right. Okay. It's yeah. not only attacking our health, right. but also attacking our wealth. Right. Invariably, he's talking about the economy. Definitely, this pandemic have had so much impact on the economy, and that is why I have to salute the courage of the government now in coming up with these palliatives. Before the death of the government, mm. last week, Thursday, last week, Thursday, the FCT Committee, committee of FCT... That's a federal capital territory. Federal capital territory. Right. The Which imams, the League of Imams here in FCT, right. took it upon themselves at least to go and show, extend their hands of fellowship to all the six area councils. They met with the imams, went with some commodities or food items, mm. and also cash at least for logistics, like somebody who lives in a very far remote village to come out and collect this, to use it as a transportation to go back. So the palliative that government is coming up now with is a welcome idea. Mm. And that will, in all ramifications, at least reduce the impact that that will have on the economy. But, but are you, you, people like you who run mosques and yes. so on, I mean, are, are you feeling those palliatives? Are, are, are they, I mean, are you beginning to, is that money beginning to trickle down to you and to your congregation who need it? For our own center, for now we've not received any, but I want to believe maybe the administration, they are still working out modalities to make it the workable procedure 
how it will get down. That is my own belief. But as far as we are concerned, in our congregation, we have not received anything. Right. And if the Muslim faithful continue to attend congregational prayers in defiance of the lockdown, which appears to be happening, it's not just the Muslims, quite a lot of Christian communities as well, continue to attend congregational prayers in defiance of the lockdown. Do you think the authorities, the police, the army, should step in to restrict such public gatherings? I mean, we've seen evidence of this happening in churches, and I think it also happened in a couple of mosques. I mean, do you think that should be the way to go? Absolutely. Because number one, those people are endangering their lives. The leadership of those congregations, they are also endangering the life of their followers, which shouldn't be the case. Then what option? do the authority have now mm. is to step in and make everybody enforce the law that you must close this your gathering. Mm. It must not be because it's an obligation upon the authority to do that right. because they are charged with the responsibility of protecting the lives which those congregations, they are also part of their subjects. So absolutely, government should enforce any relevant authority deemed fit on those that are organizing that gathering and also if possible extending it to also the followers right okay uh, are there those though that believe that the closure of religious institutions is a secular move and that religious groups should be able to hold congregations because religion itself is an act of survival prescribed by god in such circumstances as this one. In other words, such congregations are something prescribed by God where he says, come and pray to me and I will give you succor. No. Yes, uh, Islam is a dynamic religion. Dynamic in the sense that every situation, Islam has a solution, an alternative to it. As mm. I said, if you see a danger, to prevent that danger from approaching you should be the first step you should take. Note that after you have seen the danger, you allow the danger to now come to you. And the, then you pray to God. Then you now pray saved. to God. That right. is not. You try to keep a distance from the danger. And how do we keep a distance from the danger in this circumstance? Is to stop the gatherings. Because the communication of this virus is through these gatherings, the transmission from this person to that person to that person to that person. So the advice is maintain Absolutely, social yes. distancing. Okay. Yes. Dr. Uma Yanda Aliyu, Deputy Chief Imam Uthman bin Alfan Mosque in Abuja, who's also a lecturer at the College of Education in Abuja. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much. You're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, including those conspiracy theories about 5G and the coronavirus has been doing the rounds in Nigeria and beyond. We'll talk about that when we return. Stay with us.